All right, welcome back. So um, we're going to actually see how we implement this LSTM using time series data, okay? So um, we have understood the theory behind LSTM, but now we're going to see the implementation of that as well, all right? So um, I have I have this data set over here, right? Uh, monthly milk production, right? For the year 1962, all right? So we're going to use that data set to get the understanding of how um, LSTM is being implemented when it comes to time series data. Okay, in this case, we, we're going to concern ourselves with the monthly um, production, right? But we can do it for, I mean, yearly, monthly, quarterly, day, I mean, within any time stamp at all, right? You just have to get the idea of how it is done and you can do it for any, any, I mean, time stamp at all. So I'm just importing this library right over here, just pandas, numpy, matplotlib, which we are familiar with okay and then i'm reading this particular data set i've loaded it at the resource session for you so you can um i mean work alongside you can just download and work alongside okay monthly milk production.csv you can just download and work alongside i'm using google collab over here right so i'm reading the data set and then i'm setting the in the index column to be the date so in the data set i have two columns one is date one is production Okay, and I'm setting the date column to be the index. Okay, because by default, um, it's going to actually let me even take it out and then now you will see how it is. All right, and then maybe comment this one out as well. All right, so let me just run this. All right, and then let me show you how it is. So I have two columns, date and then production. Okay, so I want the date to be the index, all right? Because by default, I'm gonna have this index but I want to be able to assess these values easily using their respective dates. Okay, if you're working with time series data, it's very much advisable to use, um, I mean, the date as the index so that you base on the date to assess the data. Okay, and if you see how the date is looking like, okay, it's something, something. So it doesn't really look like a date, right? I mean, by human intuition, you can actually see that this is 1962, but as to whether this is day or month, we don't really know. So that, that's basically why I'm using past, I mean, past dates over here to be true so that uh, pandas will understand that this is, is actually a, a date column, right? And then I'm also using this one. I mean, certain, uh, I'm saying the index column equals date so that this date will become the index. And then here I'm indicating that this is, um, I mean, the frequency is is a respect to month. Okay, so that to get to know that, okay, this is not day, but a month, right? So this is 1962. The year is just the same thing, 1962, 1962. But this is month, first month, second month, fourth month, fifth month, right? January, February, March, April, May, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's basically what I am doing over here, right? So once I do that, so let me rerun and then show you. Okay, now you see that the date is now the index. Okay, and then we have the production to be um, just one column over there, right? So here, I'm just gonna plot it for you to see how it looks like, okay? So if I run this one over here, right? So this is how it looks like. You can see that from 1963, right? All the way um, forward, right, to I mean, 1975, okay. So, I mean, remember, we are just seeing the head, okay. We are just seeing the head. So, we are seeing that it's 1962, but if you take out the head, right, there are also other um, years over there as well, okay. So, you can see 1962, right, uh, 1975, okay, all the way to 1975. So, this is how, I mean, the milk production has been since 1963, actually since 1962, okay, it starts from here, since 1962. So, from here to here is one year, from here to here is one year, another year, another year, another year, another year, like that, right? So all the way from 1962 to 1975, this is the, how it is, okay, milk production has been, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how, I mean, the season has been, okay? Let me plot this one and explain it alongside for you to see. Okay, so that's what I want to do. I want to show you how over the years, I mean, it has been. So I'm using seasonal decompose. Okay, seasonal de decompose. And I'm using that one to decompose the production column, right? Which is just, just one column that I have. Okay, all right. So if I do that, you will see that, I mean, here I'm just plotting, right? So if you observe, this is the observation that it has done, okay? And it's observing that most of the time our 
data ranges from 600 to 800 and this is how it is okay it just ups and downs ups and downs like that and here is giving us the trend right the trend is an upward trend since 1972 all the way to 1975 okay and then um the seasonality you can see here is just up and down up and down up and down like that right the last one here the residual is what your i mean the seasonal decompose is not able to really explain right what is really going on that's what is not able to explain from 1963 to 1975 all right okay so what i'm going to do next is to define my training data and my testing data okay so um if we check the length of our data we have 168 okay we have 168 so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to reserve the last 12 right the last 12 um data points for testing and then after that everything else right for training okay so i'm just doing something like this um let me do it over here right i'm doing something like this 168 okay 168 minus 12 Right, so if I do that, I have 156, okay. So I'm selecting uh, from the first data points all the way to 156, and then reserving the last 12 for testing, okay. So the first um, values, the first 156 data points, I'm using them for training, and I'm using the last 12 months for um, testing, okay. That's basically what I'm doing over here. Then I'm going to use a uh, memory scalar to scale the data points, okay. Because if you, uh, let me run this one. All right now because if you if you see um, our data points let me show you right you can see that there are some that are around 500 there are some that go all the way to 700 right even if you see the tail let's see the last um, values that we have right you can see that there are some that are even 800 right so there are i mean small values in there there are big values in there right but to account for or have some consistency in there we need to minimize I mean, um, standardize our, our, our data points. So we're using Mima Scalar over here to scale them, right? So if we if we do that, I mean, remember we have imported and stored everything in Scalar. So I'm doing Scalar.fit on the training, right? And then uh, once I do that, I do um, Scalar.transform. In fact, you can do Scalar.fit uh, transform over here, right? Without you doing fit and then going to do transform, okay? You see that the function is there. You can do that okay so here you see that i did it twice scalar.fit and then i'm doing scalar.transform okay so that becomes my skilled data okay so i'm doing it for the training and then for the test as well right we see that i'm doing it differently and that's what you're supposed to do first divide the your data set before doing any scaling all right now once i do that now let me run it okay now if i show you the first thing in the skilled I mean the scaled train you see that this is how they look instead of this okay they have been scaled between zero and one all right now um i'm going to use time series generator over here right to generate some time series i mean to work on my data to generate it in a form of a time series so what i'm doing here is that i'm picking the three batch i mean three batches at a time right and then i'm going to use that one to predict the next batch okay so the input here uh, the number of input at a time is going to be three and then the number of features of course is one just production okay we only have production to be the number the input and then the generator here i'm using the time series generator okay then i'm passing the skill train and then the length to be the end input and then the batch size to be one right so here what i mean it means is that um if i have something like this okay let me um try to explain here you have numbers like say one two three and i want to predict the next one the next one will be four right the next one will be four now once i predict that four once i base on say one two three to predict four okay what is going to happen is that i need to form a new um i mean i need to form a new number or sequence of numbers so in that case it's going to be two three and then the four that i predicted okay by dropping this one if i'm picking them three at a time okay so that i can base on this one to predict the next now if the next one that i can predict will be say five okay so the new sequence is going to be something like this right three four five okay then if i want to predict um the next one is going to be six right so the new sequence that is going to form is going to be four five six and so on and so forth okay the next one here is supposed to predict seven okay so the new sequence is going to be um five going to be five six seven right and so on and so forth 
So that's that's basically what I'm doing over here. So uh, once I do that, let me run it. Okay, once I do that, then um, I'm going to just print out these things for you to see. Let me run it. So um, remember, I've stored everything in generator. Okay, so in generator, uh, if I print the first item over there for you to see, right, that is the X and the respective Ys. Okay, so the X over there, this is the first three that I selected, right? Remember, I've converted everything to this form. Okay, so the first three is what? 0 0.0. 0 0.8 something something 0 0.19 something 0 0.209 something okay 0 0.08 something 0 0.19 something 0 0.209 something that's the first thing so when i base on that i should be able to predict um the next okay i should be able to predict the next which is 0 0.247 something and that's what what is happening over there okay so they predicted this y which is this okay so if i pick um if I put one over here, right, if I put one over here, right, which means that it's going to pick, um, it's going to skip this one. Okay, It's going to skip this one and then pick the the three from here. So it's going to be this one. Okay. And then based on that, we need to predict the next one, which is 0 0.418 something. Let's try that and see. You see that is there, 0 0.41 something. Okay. If I put um, two over here, if I put two over here, I should be able to um predict which means that i'm gonna skip the first two right and i'm going to pick the next three which is this one so i should be able to predict 0 0.346 something right let's see okay zero point something something all right that does i mean that's basically what is happening remember we have not used any LST, lstm over here so don't think this is what lstm is doing we have not talked about lstm yet right we are this is just for time series generator all right. Now, um, as I said, we're going to use the we're going to use two of minus data to predict the next one. OK, so here I was just using three. Right. So I just the same code. Right. But this one, I was just using it to, for you to understand how it is. OK, so this time I'm going to use um, two of minus data. OK, I'm going to use two of minus. Right. And then um, when I pick the two of minus data, I should be able to predict the 13th one. OK, I should be able to predict the 13th. OK, something like that. So um, let me run that. Great. Now importing the sequential dense and then LSTM. Now that we are going to do the LSTM thing, right? So let's run this one. Okay. So once we do that, then we do the normal thing, which is our sequential. So sequential equals model, and then here you can see the add model dot add, right? And we are putting LSTM over here. Okay, model dot add, and then this time it's gonna be LSTM. Okay. And then, um, I mean, I'm defining 100 neurons with that vision to be ReLU and then the input shape to be the, I mean, the input that I've given here, which is 12, and then the number of features, right? The number of features um, I gave us just one because we only have one uh, features over there, right? And then um, I'm putting dense over here, which is going to be the last layer, right? It's just going to be one output that we are expecting, okay? And then here I'm using um, compile, right? Optimizer equals Adam, loss equals uh, MSC, right? You can change them to whatever that you want. I'm sure by now you're familiar with these things. Okay, so I just run that and you can, I mean, do the um, summary or not. I mean, in this case, we might not even want to do because we have seen it over and over again. All right, then um, here is important. I'm going to do fit, right? Model.fit. And then I'm passing in the generator, right? It, and then the epochs is I'm going to do 50 epochs over here, right? The generator is nothing but what we defined over here. Okay. So let's let's run that and see, right? Remember that we have already um, compiled our model. So model.fit, right? And then I pass in my generator, I pass in my, um, my number of epochs. Okay, so let me just run that one. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but that is, that's fine. Let's just wait for it, okay? It's going to be a little bit faster, right? Because this data is quite small. So it's, it's going to finish uh, as soon as possible. Okay, see that now, just now we are at, I mean, 13. We're just going to finish very, very soon. Okay. Okay, so now you see that we are at 45 just now, 47, 48, 49, and then we are there. Okay, so that's it. We are for running for 50 epochs, okay? Now let's um, now see the loss. Okay, let's see the loss, how it is doing. So 
I'm using model.history.history .history and then I'm getting the loss out of that. Okay, I could have just done uh, model.history over here, right? That is if I have stored this one, this model into history. If I have done something like this, okay, then I could have done that. But since I didn't do it uh, earlier on, right, I'm just um, putting here as model.history.history. .history, okay. All right. So let me undo and then run it for you to see all right so you can see how the loss has reduced over the time okay how it has uh, reduced for, before we get to the 50 epochs so maybe we could have stopped somewhere maybe 20 epochs or or maybe 30 epochs okay because after that you can see that the loss is not really reducing any significantly all right so that's that's basically how it is how you use the lstm to build this kind of a model so let's see how the prediction goes because we say that if you pick the first um, 12 data points, you're supposed to be able to predict the next. Okay, so let's see how it is. So here, I'm using 12, um, I mean the last 12 months data points to make the prediction. So I'm just storing it in last train batch. And then here, what I'm doing is that I'm going to just reshape it, okay, so that I'll get the exact shape as um, earlier on we used to train the model, okay. You need to make sure that the input and the number of features are there to match the same way right otherwise you're going to have an error so once i do that and i store everything in last train batch i just use that one to make the prediction okay so i do model.predict let me run this one then i'll run this one then i run this one okay so um that's how it's gonna be so we see that we have um, a predicted value over here but don't forget this is a time series data we are not predicting exactly the value that was there okay we are predicting a value but it's supposed to be closer to the original i mean the original value okay but not exactly because it's a time series data so you cannot um, predict exactly the value right in, in, that is going to be there okay for instance if you are predicting say um, stock price for the next day it's, it's not likely you're going to have the exact price okay but it should predict a price which is closer to the price that is going to be okay so that's basically what we are doing so um we predicted 0 0.60 this one should be close to the actual value okay so if we see the actual value that was in that i mean in the scale test okay let's see how it is it looks like you see that this is 0 0.67 right 67 we predicted 60 still around 60s okay so it's, it's quite okay although this one um there's seven here right which we i mean which we did not predict but that that's okay right because um in time series data it's possible that you can even predict 20 10 over here but you can see that we are still predicting within or around the actual value okay we are predicting around the actual value right what i'm going to do is that i'm going to um now predict the entire thing over here for you to see okay i'm going to use that um, the last 12 value and then predict the entire thing for you to see okay so i'm setting this uh, empty list over here right and then once i do that um i'm selecting the last 12 values right which is going to be the first evaluation batch which i'm going to use okay then i'm just reshaping it over here storing it in current batch okay it's just the same thing that we're doing over here but this time um instead of just one right i'm using all of the 12 all right at once so once i get it once uh, once i have my current batch what i'm going to do is that uh, like the example that i showed you earlier on okay let's go all the way up okay this example so once I, I use say one two three to predict four right i should be able to drop the one okay and then i append this four to the um two three okay to make it two three four in the same way if i use two three four to predict five i should be able to um i mean delete this two and then i append this five to this one so that it will become three four five okay in the same way if i use three four five to predict six then I should be able to drop this one and then I append six to four, four, five, six, right? So that I can use four, five, six to predict seven. Okay, if I use four, five, six to predict seven, I should be able to drop four and then I append seven to this one. So I'll have five, four, five, six, seven, and then use that one to predict the next. So that's basically what um, I'm doing here in addition. 
Okay, so once I get to the current prediction, so for instance, maybe this the entire this thing will be something like say one, two, three. Okay, and that I'm using that one, then I predicted four. Okay, then I predicted four. Right now, what is happening is that I need to be able to drop this one, and then I pent this four. Okay, to this to this one, so that to become three four. Right, so that I use that one to predict the next. So that's what is going to happen over here. See that I'm using. I'm adding the current one to the test predictions. Then once I do that, um, I'm, I'm dropping the first one over here, right? I'm dropping the first one over here and then making sure that the current prediction is there and that's gonna be the current batch. Okay, so let me undo this one. So that's basically what is going on in this entire um, code, right? Okay, so once we do that, now if we see the test prediction, Okay, this this is what we have. Okay, this is what we are predicting. Right? Remember, um, that's what we predicted. Even for the first, I mean, for the first one, 0, 0.0, 0, 0 0.60 something something. Okay, and then we are predicting all the others. Okay, all the other eleven to make it twelve. Okay, all right. So now, if we see the original, this is how the original looks like. Okay, the original um, production value over there is eight hundred and thirty-four. Okay, eight hundred thirty-four. Right, but remember this one is um, scaled within zero to one, so we need to um, make sure that it's also in. We, we convert it back to the original value, okay? Because we have used the main mass scalar to scale it, so we're gonna convert it back to the original value using the inverse transform, okay? So scalar dot inverse transform the test predictions, okay? The test predictions that we have. All right, so once uh, we do that. Then I want to append it here so that we can compare them and see if they are closer or not. All right, so let's um, do that. Right, I'm creating another, um, I mean, another column in this test, right, to be here. And I'm naming it as predictions, right, and then I'm appending this true predictions over there. So let's um, see how it looks like now. Okay, so ideally it's supposed to be three eight hundred and thirty four. We predicted eight hundred and four, right? So we are still in the eight hundreds. Now you see that this one is seven hundred and um, eighty two. Then we predicted eight hundred. Okay, not that far from that. What we don't want is to predict if, for instance, the value is say seven hundred eighty two. Then we predict say hundred. That's that's a huge error. Okay, it should be close. So here eight hundred ninety two. We predicted. 873 right 903 we predicted 900 and 909 right 966 we predicted 947 so i mean you can see they are they are pretty um i mean close let's see the tail and see that's the last five values you can see that they are also very 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 close right 797 780 uh one you see they are very very very, very close over there right so i mean it's, it's quite good let's actually plot them and see how they look like you can see that they follow i mean almost the same pattern okay almost same pattern over there right so i mean it's, it's doing good we don't expect it to be perfect but i mean time series you will never get it in to be perfect but you can actually get it to be very very close like we're seeing right we can check the root mean square error over here right so i'm importing mean square error right and i'm importing square so that I'll, I find when I find the mean square error, right, of the production, so that is the actual values and also the predictions, I can find square root of that to get the um, root mean square error. Okay, so once I do that and I print it, you see that's 21, not that high, okay, not that high. So that's 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 how you do it. That's how you use um, LSTM to, to actually build um, NLP model to make the, such kind of um, a prediction. Okay. All right. So we're going to see more of these things in the upcoming um, tutorial as well. Okay. We have a couple of um, lab sessions to go to reinforce our understanding. All right. So see you in the next tutorial. Have a nice day.